now see so we had completed the applications also applications of thermal expansion now see like solids liquid also expand on heating so since liquids do not have a shape of their own they take up the shape of the vessel in which they are kept so that's why we talk only of the volumetric expansion in case of solid only the volume expansion we have seen three types of expansion do you remember akifa you were there in the class linear expansion yes, what was the other one linear expansion volume expansion and what was the third one uh, cubical expansion cubical was the volume one the second for 2d um, superficial expansion. superficial when the increase in area was there when there was an increase in area fine all right so now see so in case of salt in case of liquids we only consider volumetric expansion volume expansion or the cubical expansion so when the liquid is heated in a container the container also expands along with the liquid now see what is meant by real expansion what is meant by apparent expansion real expansion is when the liquid expands but the container does not expand for example this is the this is the example that i have taken see for example this is this orange is a container this is a container and i have kept the liquid in it at some temperature t1 now see i have increased increased the temperature to t2 now when i have increased the temperature what will happen the liquid will rise the liquid will expand that's what we have seen regarding thermal expansion now see if the container does not expand what will happen the liquid has to expand in this much space only so the liquid will expand let's say till over here this we were which you are able to see but the container is not expanding so this kind of expansion this is known as real expansion now see what if the container were also expanding all the containers were also expanding see this is the container this is the water now see if the container is made up of metal or something which expands on heating so the level of liquid will also increase the level of liquid will increase because of thermal expansion in liquid and the containers thermal expansion will also increase because of thermal expansion of solid so what will happen now the level of the liquid will not rise that much why it won't rise that much because it has the space to expand now in the previous case since the vessel was not expanding it didn't have this and it didn't have enough space to expand so this kind of expansion where the container also expanded this is known as the apparent expansion so real expansion is always greater than apparent expansion and real expansion is when the expansion of liquid occurs but the container does not expand and what is apparent expansion when the container as well as the liquid which it is containing both expand so that that in that case the container also expands on heating the liquid we observe the apparent expansion of the liquid so see if we subtract both of them the real expansion and the volumetric expansion we'll get the volume of the container whatever is the volume of the container the change that has occurred so delta v container is equal to delta v real minus delta v apparent now see we have we can have two cases in which case will the level of liquid increase in which case the level of liquid could decrease in both of these cases so now see if volume if delta v real means a change in volume in case of real expansion is greater than change in volume of the of the container then what will happen liquid level level will increase and if vice versa happens then liquid level will decrease and if both of them are equal means whatever is the change in the real expansion of liquid in the change in the volume that is equal to the change in volume of the container then we say the liquid level will not change because obviously if both of them are changing with with same rate then what will happen the liquid level will remain same 
so these are the three cases that we get now see the way we had coefficient for linear expansion what was coefficient for linear expansion how did we denote it alpha alpha and coefficient of superficial expansion beta beta and coefficient of cubical expansion gamma gamma now see we have coefficient of real expansion to the apparent expansion similarly to what we had previously now see since it's a type of the cubical expansion the volume expansion is so this is also represented by gamma but just the thing is that we put a subscript r and a subscript a in order to differentiate between the cubical expansion for solids and coefficient of real expansion and coefficient of apparent expansion Now see, just the there's a slight difference in case of formula. Coefficient of real expansion is whatever is the increase in volume, change in volume is there by the original volume multiplied by the change in temperature. So this is how we used to write the previous volume is expansion gamma. Also. It's just that in this case the definition changes. That is, this change in volume is now increase in volume. similarly we have apparent expansion coefficient which is the apparent increase in volume by the original volume by the change in temperature this is how we used to write for the previous one cubical expansion yes or no this was what we got so see volume volume unit will get cancelled and again the unit of gamma will be kelvin inverse or per degree celsius inverse similar to this and the way we have delta v is equal to delta v real minus delta v apparent if you cancel all the terms you will get gamma container is equal to gamma real minus gamma apparent is this clear thermal expansion in liquids yes and aisha if you have any doubts you can ask me because i think you were having your exams these few weeks Okay. 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 Now see, just a last topic for from this topic uh, expansion of water. Now see, there is an anomalous expansion of water. That is, if you plot the graph of volume versus temperature and density versus temperature, you get a different kind of graph. That is what happens. Just understand this. This is just the reciprocal of it, so you'll understand it. So what happens? Volume of water first decreases when you increase the temperature. So in this portion, volume is directly proportional to temperature till four degrees Celsius. Volume of water decreases just after four degrees Celsius. Volume of water increases as the temperature increases. Means volume is directly proportional to temperature. So the reason behind is chemistry only. Hydrogen bondings break and these chemical reactions molecular chemical reactions occur so that is a part of chemistry and you'll be learning in chemistry what happens what you observe is this kind of graph and see you must be remembering density is equal to mass by volume and density is inversely proportional to volume so if we are if the volume is decreasing till 4 degree celsius the volume the density will increase till 4 degree celsius and as density as and as volume is increasing along with temperature density decreases with temperature so is the anomalous expansion of water clear you have to remember these terms just remember the temperature till 0 to 4 degree celsius what happens in case of volume and just reciprocate it for the density so just note this down then we'll begin with the calorimetry part uh, specific heat let me know wherever you are getting doubt you can ask me i'll repeat the topic
मैम के न्यूज को Mom, can you scroll down?
Mom, can you scroll up? Mom, can you scroll down? Done, mom. Both of you? Okay, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. So now let's start with specific heat. Now see. See, when we apply, when we supply heat to a solid substance or uh, even a liquid, its temperature increases. So it is found that amount of heat that is absorbed by the solid. Okay. Let, let me give you an example. Like this is a block. The mass of this block is M. At the temperature T1 it was kept. Now I have supplied it with some heat and it has in, and the temperature has increased to T2. Now, see, according to some observations, according to these experiments that have already, already been conducted, the heat that is absorbed by this solid, whatever heat will be absorbed from this heat supplied by this solid, this is proportional to this heat supplied. It is proportional to mass of the substance, means mass of the solid or the mass of liquid that whatever is taken. So in this example, this will be the mass of this block. Now see, if T1 was the initial temperature, T2 is the final temperature. What is the temperature difference? Yes, anyone? How do we take the temperature difference? T2 minus T1. Exactly, T2 minus T1. 
that is how we take the temperature difference or any difference final minus initial so see delta t is the temperature difference so what we have observed is that the amount of heat absorbed by the solid substance or the liquid substance this is directly proportional to the rise in temperature also so delta q is directly proportional to delta t so q is proportional to m q is proportional to t so combining the two factors we have delta q is directly proportional to m delta t now see this is the sign of proportionality and in order to remove the proportionality sign we put an equal to with a constant so delta q will be equal to p this is a constant that is used here m delta t now see whatever is the constant of proportionality that we are getting this constant of proportionality is known as specific heat capacity or simply specific heat so the c is specific heat capacity or you can simply say specific heat of the substance so if one mass if, if i put mass as 1 kg and temperature difference as 1 degree celsius then specific heat will be equal to change in heat or the heat supplied so now see how can we define it specific heat of a solid or liquid may be defined as amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 kg solid or liquid through 1 degree celsius or 1 kelvin so this is what is known as specific heat now regarding the unit now regarding its unit c will be equal to delta q divided by m delta t so si unit for c it would be delta q this is heat supplied this is joules per kg per kelvin and if i write it in cgs unit what is the cgs unit of joule कैलरी कैलरी पर ग्राम पर डिग्री दिस विल बी दीजियस यूनिट ऑफ सी स्पेसिफिक हीट कैपेसिटी नाउ सी दिस वॉज रिगार्डिंग वॉट वन के जी ऑफ सॉलिड और लिक्विड if i write it for one mole of a substance then the constant that i'll be getting instead of c i'll instead of m i'll be writing n that means instead of 1 kg i'll be writing 1 mole so rest of the definition remains same the molar spe spe uh, specific heat capacity for a liquid or a solid both is defined as amount of heat supplied required to raise the temperature of one mole of a solid or a liquid liquid through 1 degree celsius or 1 kelvin so mm -hmm. the definition and everything remains same is just that mm -hmm. molar heat capacity this is specifically for one mole and specific heat capacity was specifically for 1 kg of a substance so in case of si unit since we are not getting kg means mass is omitted over here so the si unit instead of getting joules per kg per kelvin we'll be getting joules per mole per kelvin and similarly the cgs unit will be calorie instead of joules mole will remain the same and instead of kelvin we will be having degree celsius so these are two quantities molar heat capacity and specific heat capacity now see calculate the heat required to raise temperature of 10 kg of water from 10 degree celsius to 50 degree celsius and specific heat capacity is provided to us so we have to find out the heat required that is delta q is equal to mc delta t we have so q we have to calculate mass is given as 10 kg c is given as 4.2 into 10 to the power 3 joules per kg per kelvin fine what is the change in temperature 40 degrees 
40 degree Celsius. That is 50 minus 10. This is 40 degree Celsius. So do we have the sufficient data for calculation of heat? Yes, ma'am. So we just have to multiply all the terms and we will be getting delta Q. So delta Q will be equal to 10 multiplied by 4.2 into 10 to the power 3 into 40. So this will come approximately around 16.8 into 10 to the power 5 joules. Or you can even write it like this. 1.68 into 10 to the power 6 joules. So this was a very simple numerical. I hope nobody is having doubts in this. Yes, clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let us see for this also. Molar heat capacity. Yes. Calculate the heat required to raise temperature of 2 moles of hydrogen from 10 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius and C is already given to us. So C delta Q is, will be NC delta T over here. Number of moles are given as 2. C is 2.3 into 10 to the power 2 and the change in temperature. What is the temperature change now? 50 degrees. 50 degrees. So 60 minus 50. 60 minus 10, that is 50. So this will come out approximately 2.3 into 10 to the power 4. So are these two terms clear? Yes, ma'am. Specific heat and specific heat, molar specific. Now, see, specific heat of water is unique. As in, you have to remember the value of specific heat of water. So, as with solids and liquids, the specific heat of water is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water through 1 degree Celsius. So, this is by definition equal to 1 calorie. 1 calorie is this. One more thing, if you have to convert calorie, so 1 calorie is equal to 4.186 joules, which you can write it as 1 calorie is approximately equal to 4.2 joules here. Sometimes this is used. Sometimes this can also be used. The way you write it for acceleration due to gravity, sometimes 9.8 meter per second square, sometimes, sometimes 10 meter per second square. So similarly, you can write it for calorie, conversion of calorie into joules. So it's just that the specific heat of water is 4200 joules per kg per Kelvin. So you have to remember this value. Is it clear till here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now let us understand two more heat capacities. One is this heat capacity, other is water equal. Now see what is heat capacity? If I write the product of MC, this is just the same as specific heat capacity. It's just that if I write M multiplied by C as F, then the formula that I'll be getting is delta Q is equal to S delta T, right? So this is the heat capacity, heat capacity of a body. This is defined as amount of heat, means amount of heat required to raise the temperature by 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin. As in, we have just eliminated the term mass, eliminated the term amount that was with respect to number of moles or it was with respect to mass of the body. So instead of writing MC, we have just taken a single quantity that is a heat capacity of that object. So particularly that heat capacity is MC is given as S. It's just a representation. So heat capacity can be written as product of mass of the substance multiply and the specific heat capacity of that particular substance. It's just a representation to omit these. This is equal to product of its mass and specific heat. And see, clearly you can see SI unit instead of, since we have, we don't have the amount quantity, that is the mass is not there and uh, number of moles and all also there. So simply it would be joules. You can write S as delta Q by delta T. So Q will be joules. And del for delta T, it is Kelvin. This is joules per Kelvin. And in case of CGS unit, it would be calorie per degree Celsius. Now see, 
question says calculate the heat required to raise the temperature of body from 10 degree celsius to 110 degree celsius so see again we have from this unit you have to identify whether it is specific heat capacity whether it is molar peak heat capacity or it is simply heat capacity so looking at the unit which heat capacity is given only heat capacity or specific heat capacity only heat capacity only heat capacity is given so it means we have to use this s delta t so delta q will be s is 2000 what is delta t akifa 110 minus 10 110 minus 10 that is 100 so this will be 2 into 10 to the power 5 joules one more quantity then i'll give you ample time to write it down water equivalent now what is meant by the water equivalent see the water equivalent of a body is measured in kg in si units and in cgs unit it is measured in gram firstly understand what is meant by water equivalent the way we had heat capacity see firstly we had seen specific heat capacity specific heat capacity was represented by p then we had molar heat molar specific heat capacity which was represented by n this was for 1 mole this was for 1 kg when we had specifically the value of specific heat for water that was 4200 so we used to write it as specific heat for water specific heat for water that was 4200 then we have seen another quantity quantity that was heat capacity that was heat capacity all right so if when we talk about the specific heat specifically if we talk about the heat capacity of water then we say that is the water equivalent so like m into c we used to write it as s in the previous case what we have seen what was heat capacity that was the product of mass of the substance and the specific heat capacity of the substance now if that substance that i am referring to is water then the constant that i'll be getting that s that s is just given another name that is known as the water equivalent so just similar to the previous case that we had like mc was s now mc will be equal to water uh, w w is the coefficient the representation of water equivalent so see the water equivalent of a body it is defined as mass of water that will absorb or lose the same amount of heat as the body for same rise or fall in temperature so water equivalent of a body is numerically equal to what it is numerically equal to mass of the body and its specific heat so we may conclude that water equivalent and heat capacity both are numerically equal s was also equal to mc water is also equal to mc so numerically both of them are equal but physically this is specific for water mass of water that the body will absorb this is for any general substance and just remember one thing in this case water equivalent of a body is measured in kg in the si units in the si units it is measured in kg and it is measured in gram in kg you have to just remember this because this is something different is this clear let's do a numerical that will make it clear now see calculate the heat required to raise the temperature of copper from 10 degree celsius to 60 degree celsius okay one by one you only will tell me yes aisha what is the formula which formula should i use q is equal to w delta t yes delta q is equal to w delta t so i have to calculate the heat so i am not aware of the heat sign water equivalent w is given to me as 10 g all right yes after sir what is the change in temperature delta t 15 15 this is 60 minus 10 that is 
so delta q will be 10 multiplied by 50 so this is since this was in grams and this is in degree celsius so this will also we'll be getting in cgs unit only so for heat cgs unit is calorie so this is 500 calorie are these four terms clear to all of you yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so start writing it down from the starting Wherever you have doubt, you can ask me. I'll repeat the topic. Ma'am, can you school?
کم که نیست بودم
मैम के मुस्को मैम के इसको लाऊं ट्रांसफर्स ऑफ हीट पोर्शन हैज बीन डिलीटेड फ्रॉम माय फ्लोटिस नो दिस टाइम आई थिंक प्रीवियस इयर आल्सो ट्रांसफर ऑफ हीट फ्रॉम थर्मल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मैटर हैज बीन डिलीटेड एनी आईडिया यस मैम इट्स डिलीटेड
done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, any doubts? Have you understood these four concepts? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So now see, similar to it, let's see one more quantity that is latent heat. What is the latent heat of a substance? Now see, in order to understand what is latent heat, first let us understand what are the change of state. It means changes of states of matter. Now see, supposedly I have, I have ice and the temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now see, whenever I will apply heat to this minus 10 degrees Celsius of ice, ice on application of heat converts into water. But see, when we apply heat to this ice, if the temperature is not zero degrees Celsius, then first the heat, this ice will lose the temperature and the temperature will rise up to zero degrees Celsius of ice. So from minus 10 degrees Celsius of ice, it has loosened the temperature. So from minus 10 degrees Celsius, it is now zero degrees Celsius of ice. So is it a change of state in this case or is it a change of temperature in the first case? Change of temperature. Change of temperature, correct. Now see, when I'll further apply heat on this zero degree Celsius of ice, now, since water is, in, I mean, ice is at its freezing point, that is zero degree Celsius. Now, no more temperature can be changed of ice. So, what will happen? The ice will change its state from being solid to being liquid, that is water. So, now zero degree Celsius of ice will convert it into zero degree Celsius of water. So, is it a change of temperature or is it a change of state? Change of state change of state. Now see, now I have zero degree of zero degree Celsius of water and I have started with minus 10 degree Celsius of ice and it can be anything minus 12 degree any temperature apart from zero and below zero. So I've just chosen a random example. Don't learn these values. Now see, from minus 10 degree Celsius of ice, now I have zero degree Celsius of water. Now what will happen if I further apply heat to this? Water will lose again the temperature. Now, see from zero degree Celsius, water will be 100 degree Celsius. Now, tell me, is it change of state or change of temperature? Temperature. Change of temperature. All right. Now, see, when I'll apply more of heat to it, to this 100 degree of Celsius of water, what will happen? What happens if you apply heat to 100 degrees Celsius of, of water. Vapor, it forms vapor. That's how evaporation occurs. So 100 degrees Celsius of water will be converted into 100 degrees Celsius of steam. This is the basic change of states knowledge that you all are aware of. It's just that the difference arises in this case is whenever state is changing from water to steam, from ice to water, there isn't any change of temperature. There is no change of temperature. So that's why we have change of state, change of temperature first, then change of temp, uh, state, then we have change of temperature, then again we have changes of state. Now understand, whenever we have changes of temperature like this case from minus 10 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius, or from zero degree Celsius to 100 degree Celsius, or be it any change of state from liquid to solid to solid to gas, be it, be it any kind of change of state. You use, whenever you have to calculate heat, you use MC delta T. Why do you use MC delta T? Because you know the change in temperature. Had the temperature not changing, if you use this in case of this, if in this case, in second case, if you use the same formula, what will happen? Zero minus zero, you'll be getting zero. So there won't be any heat change. You won't be able to calculate it. So now the heat change, how do you calculate the heat change when there is change of state, like in this example? Like in this example, when the temperature is constant, but the state is changing. That amount of heat required to raise the temperature to change the state of a substance from ice to water, from water to steam, 
from steam to back to ice and from be it any change of matter change of state of matter the amount of heat that is required to change the state that quantity and of course by 1 kelvin that is known as l l is what latent heat so this is ml now let us see what is meant by latent heat so see the amount of heat required to change the unit mass means oh sorry i think i said kelvin first temperature first no it would be kg only 1 kg of a substance so the amount of heat required to change the state of a substance so amount of heat required to change the unit mass of a substance completely from one state to another state and the constant that we have seen also in this example temperature is not changing state is changing so that amount of heat is known as the latent heat of that substance now see from your lower classes you all are aware of the all this heat changes that are occurring and the state changes that are occurring. from if a solid melts into liquid that process is known as melting and if a solid converts it, if a liquid converts it into a solid solid that is known as freezing you freeze water to obtain ice you melt ice in order to obtain water so these are just standard two terms that you are aware of i'm just reminding you whenever you convert liquid into vapor that is vaporization and from vapor if you convert it vapor into liquid that is condensation again if you have solid converted into vapor that is means solid directly converted into vapor that is ice directly converted into steam example for example ice it can be any solid so solid converted into vapor is sublimation and again vapor back to solid see it has different name one can be anti sublimation simply the opposite of sublimation one is solidification dip or deposit these are different names for the process of conversion of vapor into solid so i think you all are aware of these terms freezing melting these are not even part of your syllabus now you have you must have covered all these terms in your lower class so just a quick revision of them in order to understand what is actually latent heat so is the difference clear when you have to use specific heat and when you have to use latent heat is it clear or not yes okay yes 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 akifa akifa was saying something nothing ma'am were you saying were you asking something akasha actually your voice cracked no ma'am nothing okay okay aisha were you asking something yes ma'am i was asking you to explain it again okay okay you were asking okay i thought akasha was asking so okay see i'll explain see in order to understand what is the difference between latent heat when to use latent heat when to use specific heat what is specific heat so all the terms regarding specific heat we are very clear with all right now in order to understand what is latent heat we have to understand what happens when we apply heat to any substance now see whenever you apply heat let's we have taken an example of this minus 10 degree celsius of ice now i have applied heat to it so it has converted into 0 degree celsius of ice so here we have change in state or change in temperature change in temperature change in temperature fine so whenever we have change in temperature that is the definition i have told you for specific heat also that means amount of heat required to raise the temperature remember the definition which you have written in your notes it says the amount of heat required to raise the temperature what does it mean raise the temperature means changing the temperature from an initial state to a final state means there is a temperature difference so whenever there is a temperature difference you use mc delta t that is the heat is used as specific heat Yeah, this we have already covered. 
is there any doubt from this part no ma'am okay now see from 0 degree celsius of ice if i apply more heat i have applied more of heat to this only 0 degree celsius of ice now see what will happen the temperature will remain the same why because now the state is changing state is changing means from ice it is converting converting itself into water now there is a change of state i should tell me is there any change in temperature now no ma'am no so means whatever heat is this whatever heat is applied to change the state not the temperature when the temperature is constant whatever heat is applied to change the state that heat for 1 kg substance is known as latent heat so that's why whenever there is a change of state like if you will apply heat further to 0 degree celsius of water this will be 100 degree celsius of water so again here the temperature is changing so temp heat required to raise the temperature from 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius this will be for 1 kg of substance per degree celsius that will be simply specific heat that we have seen but if we apply more heat to 100 degree celsius of water what will happen the temperature will same remain the same that is from 100 degree celsius initially it will be 100 degree celsius finally but what about the state initially the state was of water now the state is for heat steam so whatever is this heat supplied whatever this heat is supplied or whatever heat is absorbed by this water at 100 degree celsius in order to change its state from one state to another state not its temperature temperature being constant temperature remaining constant this heat for 1 kg of substance that is nothing but latent heat of that substance is it clear now aisha yes ma'am okay Now, see, latent heat is also of not a single type. Why is it not of a single type? Because there is not a single type of change of state taking place. Regarding temperature, only one thing happens. There is T one, there is T two. So there are no different types of specific heat. Specific heat is for a particular substance. Like for water, we have seen forty two hundred. For another substance, it would be something else. So this is independent of the different various states. in case of latent heat latent heat is the heat to change the state and in order to change the state as i have told you there are so many process melting freezing vaporization condensation sublimation solidification so latent heat all the latent heat required in each process is different like for example if i tell you latent heat of fusion that is represented by lf so this is particularly for that case when solid converts into liquid this when solid converts it into liquid so whatever delta q is equal to ml will be used that l will be specifically for fusion so similarly for all the processes we have different heat of latent heat of let latent heat like latent heat of fusion will be amount of heat required to change the unit mass of solid into liquid state similarly vaporization will be what liquid into vapor state sublimation like this you have all the latent heat values so i have written only three for you all but don't think that this, these are only three types of latent heat if it's for anti sublimation it will be specifically for this phenomena only from that is the amount of heat required to change the state of steam of unit mass into solid so you can make the definition on your own for latent heat all the types of latent heat are for all the types of processes that we have just focus on the si unit see q is equal to ml l is what l is the latent heat so this will be heat per unit mass so joules per kg and if in, if you write it in cgs it will be calorie per gram so this is the conversion one calorie is 4.2 joules one gram is 10 to the power minus 3 kg so that's why i have written it this so this is just for your knowledge if 
for just to make your calculations. Now see, let us see two numericals that are based on this. Calculate the heat required to melt 10 kg of ice. Okay, so if it is written melt 10 kg of ice, what kind of latent heat should I use? Yes, latent heat of vaporization, latent heat of sublimation, latent heat of anti-sublimation, latent heat of conduction, latent heat of fusion. What kind of latent heat? Fusion. Fusion, exactly, because melting of ice is there. That is from solid zero degree Celsius ice to zero degree Celsius of water. So calculate the heat required to melt 10 kg of ice. This will simply be M L F. So mass is 10 kgs. L F is 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power 5. This will be joules per kg. So kg kg will get cancelled and finally we will be left with 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power 6 joules. Similarly, calculate the heat required to vaporize 100 kg of water. Vaporize 100 kg of water. What kind of latent heat should I use? Latent heat of fusion, latent heat of vaporization, latent heat of condensation, sublimation, what? Latent heat of vaporization. Vaporization, yes. Latent heat of vaporization because from the this 100 kg of water is converted into steam or vapor. So delta Q will be equal to MLV. It's just that in order to differentiate the processes, we are writing LV, LF. It's the same only. This is delta Q is equal to ML only. In order to differentiate it from the other. Because it may happen in that inner question, different kinds of latent heat are provided to you. So the question will be writing it like this. LF, LV. These are two different separate questions for each. This is for fusion case. This is for vaporization case you may get questions that are mixed up. So you just have to identify what type of latent heat is this. So mass is 100. Latent heat is 22.6 into 10 to the power 5. So this will be 22.6 into 10 to the power 7 joules. Now see one more thing. These numericals are very easy. One liner numericals, just you have to put the value and how to use the formula. These are for them. Mainly, you will be doing calorimetry. That is a bit tricky. Now, see, if I represent this phenomena graphically, like from minus 10 degrees Celsius of ice on applying heat to 0 degrees Celsius of ice, on applying heat 0 degrees Celsius of water, then again on application of heat 100 degrees Celsius of water, and finally, on application of heat, it is 100 degrees Celsius of steam. So, if I represent it graphically, See, it would be like this. You may get the graph in your exams to draw it. That's why I understand. If this is, and it can be any temperature given. Whatever is the temperature given, mark it on the graph. So now see what happened first. First, from minus 10 degrees Celsius of ice, it converted into zero degree Celsius of ice. So this is, let's say this is zero degree Celsius of ice. So this change is Q1. So we'll be using MC delta T. Why? Because there is a change in temperature. Then from zero degree Celsius to ice, I won't be drawing the graph above or below because there is no change in temperature and the graph is plotted between temperature and heat. So temperature remains constant, zero degree Celsius of water. Now 100 degree Celsius of water. Temperature is changing. Temperature is rising to 100 degree Celsius. This is 100 degree Celsius of water. Now the last one that we have, 100 degrees Celsius of steam. Is the temperature changing? There is no change in temperature. So the graph remains constant for 100 degrees Celsius of water and 100 degrees Celsius of steam. So see, if Q1 is heat for this, Q2 is heat for this process, Q3 is heat for this process, and Q4 is heat for this process. How will we write it? Q1, since Temperature is changing, MC delta T, Q2. Since there is no change in temperature, only change of state is there, we'll be writing ML. 
if there is change of temperature again like this we'll be writing mc delta t and finally from water to steam there is no change in temperature but there is change of state so we'll be writing m into l is this clear yes ma'am yes ma'am all right just note it down then do a numerical on your own just note these process for latent heat wherever you want to ask me ask just remember change of state latent heat change of temperature what we have done previously all the cases of specific heat and get the screen down
Mom, can you scroll down? Mom, can you scroll down? Mom, can you scroll down? Plotted? Drawn the graph? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now let's try a numerical. As I've told you, there is no not a single numerical on this question. I mean, like regarding con one conversion, one process. You you won't be getting a single question. You will be getting mixture of the questions like this. So the question is calculate heat required to convert 3 kg of ice as minus 12 degree Celsius kept in a calorie meter to steam at 100 degree Celsius. So what is this calorie meter? What is calorie metry? What is the principle of calorie metry? We'll see after this question. So just remember this is a device but the rest of the things are useful. To you. So see minus 12 degree Celsius. Now the way I was taking randomly minus 10 degree Celsius it is now it has now specified minus 12 degrees celsius so minus 12 degrees celsius of ice on application of heat this is converted into what it is converted into zero degree celsius of ice this is zero degree celsius of ice now further let's say this is q1 heat is q1 Let's say this is Q2. So see, we have done this. This is easy for you now. Instead of that random example, which I took, it is now minus 12 degrees Celsius specified. So it will be what? Zero degrees Celsius of water now. And again, I have applied water. And I have applied again heat Q3. So this will be what? 
will the temperature change or the state change temperature temperature will change from 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius of water again i have applied heat finally it is 100 degree celsius the temperature and the state is steam which was required now see as i have told you already how do we calculate q1 q2 q3 q4 so while we were plotting the graph i have told you already like when to use delta q when to use delta t have made you write separately now see delta q means all the heat added together this will be delta q1 plus delta q2 plus delta q3 plus delta q4 all the heat added up now let's see one by one so now oh, you only tell me yes akusha regarding delta q1 should i use mc delta t or ml mc mc delta t so this will be m mass of ice that is taken c then delta t what is delta t this is 0 minus minus of 12 so mc delta t q1 is clear q2 aisha ml or mc delta t mlf mlf correct very good so this will be m into l plus again akifa mc delta t mc delta t so it would be m this will be c for water specific heat for water and delta t will be 100 minus 0 yes aisha for the last one america ka ml v m l l for vaporization this will be plus m l v fine so see mass is common in all of these so let us take mass already common this is minus minus 12 will be plus 12 so this will be 12 c plus lf plus 100 c cw just in order to differentiate the specific heat of ice and specific heat of water i am writing cw plus lv so delta q what is the mass of ice given i think 3 kg yes 3 kg to convert 3 kg of ice so mass this will be 3 12 into specific heat for ice is given as 12 2100 then lf is given as 3.35 into 10 to the power 5 plus 100 multiplied by cw specific heat for water is given as 418 this is multiplied by 41 8.6 plus latent heat of vaporization will be 2.25 into 10 to the power 6. So when you will solve this, delta Q will be 3 into this will be 2.52. Then double zero for them. This is if we take out the zero, this is 3.35, and all the rest of the three zeros. Plus this will be four one eight six and the two zero plus two two five and four zeros because this is six. So when you will solve all this, delta Q will be equal to nine zero eight six four double zero. And if you wish to write it in terms of exponents, it will be nine point zero eight into ten to the power six. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So note down this numerical as well. Then we'll do calorimetry.
Ma'am, can you scroll down? Done? No, ma'am, once again. Yes, ma'am. Done, ma'am. Okay, now let us see the last topic of this chapter and today also calorie. See, the principle of what is calorimetry, I'll explain you the setup, what I have drawn. I have written all these in advance so that it saves our time because you also be having your exam in March only, Aisha, right? No, February last week. February last week. You have your exam third year. So we have to increase the duration of the class. Otherwise, the syllabus won't be completed. So see, when a hot body is mixed or kept in contact with the hot cold body, what happens is that the hot body loses heat and its temperature falls. Now, on the other hand, the cold body 
gains heat and its temperature rises so the final temperature of the mixture will lie between the original temperatures of the hot body and the cold body now if the system is completely isolated system is completely isolated means no energy can flow into and out of the system this we'll discuss tomorrow in detail regarding adiabatic process that you'll uh, be getting more clarification now see what you have to understand is the law of conservation of energy that is the heat lost by the one body by one body this is equal to heat gained by the other body so heat lost is equal to heat gained this is what is known as the principle of heat exchange or the law of heat exchange and this is the principle for a calorie meter to work now see what actually is a calorie meter the calorie metry is an experimental technique Uh, for the quantitative measurement of heat how to calculate this heat exchange so a calorie meter is used now see it consists of a cylindrical vessel like this a cylindrical vessel which is made up of copper and it is provided with a stirrer and a lid lid this covers this vessel this copper vessel and the stirrer is there in order to facilitate mixing this the contents are stirred constantly in order to obtain a common temperature so that's why we have a stir then the calorie meter is well insulated like this using a wooded wooden jacket or anything just an insulation so that heat does not to prohibit the transfer of heat into and out of the calorie meter and a thermometer is placed and what is the principle and working of thermometer we have discussed so a thermometer is kept in order to measure the temperature so this is a calorie meter just to measure the heat exchange so see what kind of questions we get on this a sphere of aluminium of this is the mass of the sphere this is placed in sufficient time in a vessel containing boiling water means if this is the vessel this is a copper vessel this is the initial case what will happen it is kept in a vessel containing boiling water so that sphere is at 100 degrees celsius now see it is then transferred to 0.14 kg uh, copper calorie meter which is containing this much 0.25 kg of water means it is transferred into what another container and what was the temperature of aluminum aluminum's temperature was 100 degree celsius the sphere is made up of aluminum only so this is 100 degree celsius this sphere now this is this is the copper calorie meter whose weight is what 0.14 kg and the what is the mass of water inside it that is 0.25 kg so it says that temperature of water rises and attains a steady state at 23 degrees celsius we have to calculate the specific heat of this aluminum so tell me if i have a aluminum if i have an aluminum sphere whose temperature is 100 degree when i place it in water will the aluminum lose heat or gain heat yes obviously the it, aluminum will lose heat if you take a hot ball and you put it in a vessel containing water what happens the ball cools down or does the temperature increase it cools down it cools down so one will be losing heat other will be gaining heat that is what is the principle of calorie meter so whatever heat will be lost by this aluminum where will it go it will go to water and it will go to the copper calorie meter this is the copper calorie meter this is water and this is aluminum ball so whatever heat aluminum is losing who is gaining it water and copper so heat lost by what heat lost by aluminum is is equal to heat gained by heat gained by 
copper as well as heat gained by water is this line clear yes ma'am okay oh. now see now how do you calculate heat you know how to calculate heat mc delta t whenever there is a change of heat to mc delta t so now the question is very simple you just have to identify this the rest of the things you have studied so heat lost by aluminium how do i write it m means mass of aluminium this is 0.047 delta t okay mc c aluminium that we have to find out specific heat of aluminium delta t delta t is from 23 degree celsius means fine uh, it was 100 degree celsius and the temperature what is the steady state it is attaining 23 degree celsius that is already written in the question to attain a steady temperature of 23 degree celsius this to attain a steady steady state of 23 degree celsius so this will be 23 minus 100 23 is the final 100 is the initial temperature so we use mod because many a times what happens this change in heat is actually compensated so we use a mod in order to avoid the negative sign the rest of the things are same heat gained by copper mass of copper is 0.14 multiplied by specific heat of copper is 0. 386 given in the question change in temperature copper is finally 23 initially it was 20 degrees celsius kept at 20 degrees this is for copper again you will use mod just to order you know in order to eliminate negative sign but here negative sign also now mass of water is given as 0.25 specific heat of water is not given but i have told you to remember it So it is four point two into ten to the power three multiplied by the change in temperature. This is the same for water because copper water is kept in this vessel, copper vessel only, cap copper calorie meter only. This will be twenty three minus twenty. Are these clear for aluminium, for copper, for water? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, so when you will solve this after the class, just try and solve this. See whether your your answer is matching with the original answer. Now the original answer is approximately zero point nine one one joules per kg per kel. Just write it down. Just just copy this numerical.
नाम का यूज कर रहा हूँ डन यस मैम